Yeah, it feels good now. It feels good in here. Uh, well, they said. No, you. <laughs> Mike Moriarty, hey, you beautiful man, brother, brother Joel. <laughs> How you doing, big guy? I'm doing great, my yeah? my grace mate. I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> I'm the ragamuffin roommate. Make no mistake about it. Wow. You're looking good, man. Well, thank you. Uh, I know you normally don't do a podcast on. Uh, You're okay. You don't do a podcast on Thursdays, but you just made <laughs> made it for me to be able to be on here oh, on a Thursday. My. I can't um, because I'm leaving over the weekend, so uh, uh, I I think that's great, and I, I, I really appreciate the opportunity I, to uh, be with awesome, you and dude. the Saints. I can't resist an opportunity to do a, part, a, a <laughs> podcast with my, with my with my mad bad brother in grace. Amen. Um, the uh, I have a uh, I didn't do a lot in the way of prep, but I have have a couple of things this morning. Uh, have you ever heard an article by or heard Stam? talk about the faith of Christ. And I don't I don't really remember ever encountering Stan talking about it, but he did. Uh, and in a recent uh, Two Minutes with the Bible email, Stan quotes, you know, that some little verse, uh, I don't think anybody's ever heard it, that Romans 3.22, <laughs> even the yeah. righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Amen. And so in this article, uh, Stam did, on, called The Faith of Christ, and I have a link to it beneath the video. Stam says, note, the Apostle Paul here does not refer to faith in Christ, but the faith of Christ. Nor does he refer to what Christ believed, but rather to his worthiness to be believed. 
his fidelity, his trustworthiness. Amen. Uh, he says we must not forget that faith is a reciprocal matter. It's two-sided. One side is objective. It believes in another. The other side is subjective. It, it, it is a trustworthy character. One refers to what a person does. The other to what he is. If I have faith in you, you should keep faith with me. You should be trustworthy. Seven times in St. Paul's epistles, he refers to the faith of Christ, and each time his purpose is to emphasize our Lord's worthiness of our complete confidence, that he does not refer to our faith in Christ is evident on the surface in each case. In the passage above, he declares that the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Christ, is conferred upon all them that believe. Here's your faith in him. Amen. Uh, similarly, in Galatians 3.22, love this verse, mm. great verse. He states that the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ Amen. might be given to them that believe. And here again, we believe because he is worthy of our confidence. <clears throat> he also cites um, Philippians 3.9. He says, the apostle expresses his desire for a righteousness not of his own but that which is through the faith of Christ, and then adds, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Here's man's faith again. He has faith in Christ because Christ is completely faithful, completely worthy to be believed in. He paid the full penalty for our sins and is now in heaven dispensing the merits of Calvary, riches of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Amen. And the thing about Philippians 3.9, uh, you know, he says, Paul said, the, the complete verse is, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. The righteousness of God imputed to you through the faith of Christ. Amen. Um, I love I love that point, and then, and then uh, Stam says, um, "But remember the the faith of Christ always precedes our faith in Christ." Amen. What good would it do us to believe in Him for salvation if He were not holy to be relied upon for this? Amen. But He can be trusted to save to the uttermost all who come unto God by him. Hebrews 7.25 is what he's citing there. And this is why Paul could say to the terrified jailer at Philippi, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Um, yeah, I love, I love those yeah, thoughts. It's the, it's the, it's, it, is, it is the evidence of his uh, fidelity to every promise that he's made. It is evidence of the, which is proven by the fact that he was obedient to the Father all the way up into his death, which shows that he will be faithful to everything he promised you if you accepted the gospel. Amen. Um, you know, uh, two things that I was going to say to that is I always keep in the background, you know, Isaiah 64, where it says, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Hey, preach and, it, brother. And so that that's talking. That's not saying our our evil righteousness. Right. It's talking about human human good and okay. human evil. So he's saying no matter how much human good you have, compared to my righteousness, your righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> and so when you started talking, Stam. Now I know Ricky, brother Ricky Jordan may have gotten one of his teachings from Stam. I because don't, I, don't we, know. I don't know that for sure, but I know Ricky did a study on the faith of Christ. And it was one oh, night yeah. it was one night late and I did that study along with Brother Ricky. And it finally got me. 
where I said, you know what? The only thing that saves me is what Christ did for me because it's his faithfulness to do what he said he would do and what God the Father said he would do and what the Holy Spirit said they would do when they had an eternal life conference about how we, the body of Christ, are going to be saved today. Yep. And so uh, there was a plan that was put in, uh, put in effect in eternity past where the, uh, the father was a, his offended righteousness because right. of sin. Right. The son says, Father, don't worry. I'm going to go as a sacrifice. Right. And I'm going to die for your offended righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> and, man, the Holy Spirit says, okay. Yeah. You know? And the three of them put this wonderful plan uh, of eternal life for the church, the body of Christ. And finally, when I realized that, like taking two hands, my faith is on the left, God's faithfulness is on the right. And all I did when I heard and, and studied on the faith of Christ is I took the faith that I had and I gave it to right. God and said, right. I'm placing my faith in your faithfulness <laughs> to do what you said you would do. Now, I'm, I'm kind so of still, I rejoice in I'm that. still putting a lot of the pieces together, but uh, Jordan developed the curriculum for Grace School of the Bible while he was at the Brian Bible Society. So it may have been possible that there were conversations between mm -hmm. Stam and Jordan at the time yeah. about the faith of Christ. Stam, uh, it may have been possible Jordan, you know, helped mm -hmm. Stam along on this, and, yep. and Stam's like, oh, that's a great idea for an article. I'm going to totally do that. And so, you know, what you have here in this article may, we don't know, we but don't know that for it sure. may be just understanding that Stam and Jordan came came together to, you know, you never know. You never know. There was some, um, I also couldn't help but notice that the Berean Bible Society has a new book they're selling called The Intermission of Grace by Fred Lewis. I think you can get it for, get a hard copy for 14 bucks or something. And I'm like, <laughs> Fred, Fred, Fred emailed me a PDF copy of the book. <laughs> and, um, and he may have with, with, with a lot of other people too. Um, the, uh, so I may have kind of sort of made that book available so you you just click the show more and you look down you might find a link where you just might find that pdf copy of the book um fred lewis is awesome i love me some fred lewis he's great he uh he did a book years ago called um what was it understanding the bible and the end times and uh he has it set up on his website where uh, if you email him, he'll just send you a free PDF of the book. He's he's great like that. Uh, so I'm sure he would not mind uh, other people getting free copies of it because that's what he would do. He's just he's just that kind of guy. We're the same way. We're, we just assume buy the truth and sell it. Not just we want people to know the truth. Um, Fred's just a really smart guy. He's got um, I skimmed the book. He's got all kinds of charts in there. Um, everything looks uh, solid mid acts. Um, but he also in that book in the in that book has a a chapter on the faith of Christ, and uh, this is what Fred Lewis wrote. He said faith has two aspects: objective and subjective. subjective. Our faith is objective, and his faith is subjective. He is the object of our faith. Mm -hmm. It would be foolish for us to have faith in one who did not keep faith or to be faithful, or to one who was not faithful. It totally. He said, Christ demonstrated his faith when he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Philippians 2.8. He said, our faith, as important as it is to salvation, is secondary to the faith of Christ. His faith, demonstrated by the cross, is what paid the price for our sins by the offering of himself. Amen. Our faith, believing, is what appropriates that payment for our sins personally. Love that statement. He, we can, he says we can put our faith in him only because he is so faithful. Amen. That says it all because I, when I think about it, and thank God, you know, most modern Bibles will, will say faith in Christ. Yeah. They do not say the faith of Christ. And that little two-letter word, of, is what finally, where the Holy Spirit took that little two-letter word. Right. And 
convinced and convicted me right. that the only way I was going to be saved and the only way I would have eternal life is the faithfulness of Christ. Amen. Placing it in his faithfulness. One little two-letter word. I mean, <laughs> that's how important words are. <laughs> you know, and I know Pastor Hal talks about it all the time. You know, is there a difference between faith in and faith of? Yeah, words do mean things, yeah, you know. Yeah. So uh, I rejoice in that and having that study because after that study, I just went outside and I cried and wept. And I said, Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit, you know, how could you love me so much? All the things that I've done, and I know I would, I would go to hell. And now it's... It's the gift of eternal life. I finally understood that that was the gift, and it was the faithfulness of Christ receiving that gift and saying there's no other way to get to heaven except through his faithfulness. Right. So, man, when, when what, Mike, what are you rejoicing? When Mike says that he went out, he after that study, went out and wept and prayed, uh, he's not exaggerating. I've seen him do this. He, he would literally yeah, do that. I did. I'm going to see if I can get him. I'm going to see. My my goal today is to see if we can get Mike worked up about all kinds of different topics. uh, (laughs) Uh uh, Uh-oh. This, uh, having said that, this is the Grace Life Podcast. We are your mad, bad brothers in Christ. I'm some guy, the original mad, bad brothers in Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm some guy named Joel. I'm Mike's ragamuffin roommate. <laughs> the uh, the title is uh, a play on words with the old Rich Mullins album. You remember that? The a Liturgy, a Legacy, and a Ragamuffin Band. <laughs> uh, he uh, actually opened that album by saying, uh, well, allow me to make this disclaimer, everybody. I'm barely ready to do this, but let's keep doing it, so don't get mad at me. And then every all the band members go, okay, amen, praise the Lord. And then they do one of the greatest albums, Christian albums ever, in my opinion. Um, and uh, this uh, to my left here is uh, brother Mike Moriarty, oh, mad bad goodness. brother. Glad to be back here with you. It is awesome, and the dude. Saints. It is so, awesome uh, having I'm here. Rejoice in that. I got to say, say, you know, we talk about the original mad bad brothers. Yeah, that's right, Christ. But I got to say, you are the faithful one. Oh uh, well. And so I rejoice in that. I mean, we're going on three years with this. I mean, it's, it'll be a two long, years, two but years, two yeah. years on, on two the years original in March, podcast. Beginning of March. Yeah, in right. March. So I and you have been so faithful, brother. Oh. And wow. and just having Pastor Hal and Pastor Fred, they have been more involved in the podcast. And I know the saints that are listening now, uh, they, they know, uh, Fred and both Hal know how much edification they've gotten Thank you, brother. themselves from this podcast. Uh, we got a bunch of links beneath the video. Check them all out. Uh, we've got, I have a link to a book I have available for free, and I just, I'm uh, happy to give it away. Empowered by His Grace. Amen. Romans 6, everything God made you in His Son. Dead, buried, risen with Him, the old Jew. Everything you were in Adam called the old man dead, D-E-A-D, dead, as Amen. Bob Picard would say, crucified Amen. with Christ on that cross, oh, boy. Uh, never to come back again, buried with Christ, and we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Um, we have, uh, so check that out. If you don't know who you are, you're not going to know how to walk unless you know what God made you in his son that moment you believed. Uh, and that's that's just what I'm all about. I want everybody to come to that joy, that understanding of who they are in Christ. That's what I want people to know. Uh, so check that out if you're not sure what I'm talking about there. We've got uh, Greg Reeser's digital radio station, Grace mm-hmm. Messages 24-7, yeah. all these places where you could um, uh, buy some uh, hard copies of Grace books uh, and some digital stuff. Check it all out. Breen Bible Society, Forgotten Truths, Dispensational Publishing House, Parson Publishing, which is uh, Joel Fink's um, publishing house. Joel Fink, man, mm, he's got a book good. on the old, Paul's Old Testament quotes that's phenomenal. Mm. I, st- I still love that book. Um, and uh, there's a link to a page on our website where you could get connected to all the Grace newsletters that's out there. There's a uh, if you want to go do the ministry. There's some schools I got here, including Grace School of the Bible, a list of Grace churches, uh, Grace Beyond Borders, the mission um, organization that does Grace missions abroad. 
Uh, totally love uh, Richard Church and the saints and all the missionaries out there getting the word of grace out there in countries that's frankly dangerous. Mm. Um, to support Richard Church, uh, we've got um, uh, D- David Reed's Gospel cri- Quiz. Mm-hmm. So if you're not sure if you're got eternal life, you're not sure if you're saved, you're not sure if you're going to go to heaven. Uh, take David Reed's Gospel Quiz. Amen. It's totally epic, and he, David Reed himself will follow <laughs> up with you. Uh, I love I love what he does there. Uh, and um, there's a page on our website where you could a link to a page on our website where you could financially support the ministry here. Uh, either through uh, PayPal, Cash App, or send a check or money order to the church. How do you feel about people giving, Mike? Oh, you have a thing about this. Be cheerful, givers. <laughs> you know, and, and and Fred said something like that. Well, he he went. He kind of said, "Well, wait a minute. You know what? Even if you're not cheerful, go ahead and give." And and I wanted, you know, yeah. next, next time I say to Fred, "Hey, well, I want to give you a gift, but I want you to know it's very grudgingly," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to hand him a hundred dollars or something, you know, and I want to see whether or not he's going to take it or not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to see where his heart really is. Yeah, I got uh, I got beneath all of that links to all kinds of grace messages from yesterday. Uh, actually, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, Ted Fellows is still doing his Old Testament survey. Ted Fellows is must see Grace TV. He I love really that man. Is. I love yeah. him dearly. Um, David Osteen uh, did a response to ROI. Uh, was it yesterday? Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. No, Tuesday. Sorry. And um, and it was good. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, I've got a link to that. Uh, you also have. A, I also have a link to a Scott Ray video. Scott Ray. Uh, used to be on board with uh, ROI and all of that heretical nonsense that he was te- that he had begun teaching, and then Scott Ray said, "You know what? After thinking about it, I was wrong, I, and I'm sorry." And uh, he's moved back to mm-hmm. he seems to have moved back to pretty uh, a fundamental mid acts dispensational views, wow. and even Scott Ray is putting videos out refuting universalism amen, amen. and I, I i saw that and i was like i didn't hear the video but i saw that and i said praise the lord wow. good for you scott good. love that good um the uh, uh we also have there was something else i was going to mention but i can't um all right well so uh, check it all out i gotta see who's in the house here um, got tons of stuff we could talk about and see if you can get mike worked up on some <laughs> doctrines that'd be kind of awesome <laughs> oh uh chris nelson's in the house my dear brother how are you he says good morning saints second corinthians 13 4 for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of god amen yep for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of god toward you um, don't get me started on that, brother. Amen. That is a that is a massive verse. Yep. Incredibly deep. Um, in fact, I did a whole message on when I was going through suffering. I have a whole message on the power of God, and there's a lot to be said about that and how it operates in us. We have, um, like for example, you have in um, you know Second Corinthians ten, which we all, twelve, which we all know really well. When when the Lord asked to have that messenger of Satan removed from him after praying three times, get rid of this thing. The Lord said, "My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me." Amen. And then he has the. Then he comes to this uh, the application really here the. I take pleasure in infirmities. Are you taking pleasure Ooh. in your back troubles there, Chris? Uh, how you feeling about that, brother? I'm still, Are you rejoicing? I'm, I'm still working on it, brother. Sometimes I do, but there's other times I... <laughs> My arm's a little sore. I'm not sure I'm rejoicing yet. Oh. Um, and uh, But he takes pleasure in reproaches, necessities, persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. strong. Amen. So you have here the you have here the the uh, uh, cause and effect in all of this. You have my grace is sufficient for thee is the cause to the effect of my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. The power of his truth, his spirit, and everything carrying you when you are weak. 
uh, is the is the point there. When he talks about the power of Christ may rest upon me, that's a different idea altogether, and I, it's the idea I think of 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 the power resting upon him. In other words, the power being visible to everybody around him, and I think which makes the suffering servant one of the most powerful testimonies that exist because the, the suffering servant, the guy that's going through the suffering and he's praising the Lord through it and he's joyful through it and he's rejoicing all the way through it, that makes the evidence of his power working in him uh, known to everybody around him, Amen. which is an amazing thing. And, and I think another thing in the, it is in the power of prayer, we understand that we give thanks in all things not for all things right you know if you right. got a bad shoulder you're not saying man thank you for the bad shoulder <laughs> yet, but thank me thank you because i'm going to get i'm, yeah. I'm going to get through this yeah you know? i mean if and, you just you're thanking and you just imagine you know you're going through one of the worst times in your life and you're praising the lord while you're going through it Amen. and you're pra- i mean that that is true power that is the that new, is true power. That is to be able to do man. that to anybody going through those hard times. Yeah, that's the new man operating yeah. effectually in you. I love I love that study. Don't yeah. get me started, man. Amen. And I, I love you, Chris. And I hope you're doing yeah. great. I truly do. Um, but uh, we also and you know you have the the Lord being the first fruit to that power and the the you know here he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of God here he was uh, you know in what, liveth by the power of God in other words he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father which is the Spirit of glory. Uh, the Holy Spirit raised him up from that dead by the, according to the will of the Father, and so he is. He is. He lives. He is resurrected by the the power of the Father, it, which was the the Holy Spirit. So then you have his life, his resurrection life, being through the Spirit, and our life, our us living his resurrection life is through the Spirit, and through which is the very power of God. Um, I don't know what else to say about that verse. That's about all I got this morning. No, you said it very well. <laughs> very well. Hey, we got we got Dan and Dan the man in the Dan house. The How you doing, big guy? Damon hey. Chen, it's awesome to see you. Hey. Um, Karen is uh, in the house. How are you, hey, Karen? Oh yeah, Gwenny put the she put off the treat the the procedure for next week. Oh okay, next Thursday. Karen's question, Genesis uh, thirty five eighteen. As her soul was in departing, does the soul have physicality? Uh, as much as a spirit would have physicality, I don't know. That that's a pretty good question. That is a good. There's question. There's a there is a physicality to some degree of a spirit. I mean, like wind. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. You should study that out and let me know. <laughs> or ask tomorrow, Pastor Hal will be here. <laughs> um, he, he's you good know, with those. does a spirit have physicality? Uh, uh, I would think so. Yeah, to some degree, yeah, I, I would, would think, think so. so. Yeah. I'm the true ragamuffin, Amy Stewart, and I hope you're doing great. It's awesome having you here. Um, what else do we have? We got Cliff Matthews in the house. Hey, hey. Uh, what else we got? Dave Perry. Yeah. Uh, Big John passed yeah, away Dave. yesterday. Please pray for his family. Absolutely. Who? Uh, Dave and Nancy Perry on oh, okay. Sunday had that prayer request for Big John, okay. and his health was really bad. They had... Uh, I think he might have been saved. I remember uh, we had they had long been on our list of uh, ministry opportunities for Dave and Nancy with them, along with a couple of other uh, folks. Um, so I'm really, really sorry to hear that. Um, Fred said uh, Gwen's doing really well. As Amen. you may know, she has uh, cancer, and her treatment begins on Thursday. So we'll see how that, that goes her, with, with yeah. chemo. Right. Karen says, faith of Christ. Justin Johnson says, Christ didn't have faith, didn't need it. But I see the faith of Christ as fidelity, his fidelity to the Father's plan. Mm-hmm. And we are to have that in mind. Uh, I would disagree with Justin. Yeah. Faith, Christ had faith. He had faith. If we, yeah. we wouldn't have the expression faith of Christ if, there were, if Christ wasn't faithful. Mm-hmm. And what was he faithful to? The will of the Father. We just went through the agony of the garden a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. where Christ literally agonized over that choice of going to the cross. He didn't want to go. But he did, and his the the fact he made that choice in the garden was his faithfulness to the will of the Father to accomplish what they set out to accomplish, as becoming the transgressor for the sins of all. 
his his entire yeah. walk, you know, uh, Christ's entire walk on earth was uh, was of faith. I mean, I, told, I mean, yeah, totally. It was, it was with it him. was it, it was, was a choice. Yeah. Every time he made a choice, he was operating on faith, faith in the Father. Yeah, absolutely. You have the uh, the also the evidence of uh, you know the fact that during the Lord's earthly ministry, he was he he was not. He did not have knowledge of when his second coming was going to be. Only the Father knew that. Do you know what that means? That means that Christ is operating on the faith in the Father. Yeah. And the will and the will of the Father. Um, I think he maybe he's taken that maybe out of context where Jesus would say, "Not my faith, but thy faith, my Father's right, faith." Right. But what he was in essence saying is, "Father, I have faith in whatever you're going to do, right? And whatever you want me to do." Right. Scripture um, speaks you know. of, and Scripture speaks of not just the faith of Christ either. They, it also speaks of the faith of God the Father. Yep. Um, you know, you have in yeah, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, a verse I love to quote, Faithful is he that mm -hmm. calleth you who also will do it. Oh. Well, you know, he's talking there about who calls you. Yeah. It's the Father that calls you through the gospel. Uh, 2 Thessalonians um, uh, 2.13, you know, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel. Amen. You know, the God the Father calls you. And faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Amen. You know, the fact that the that all of the promises have not yet been delivered requires faithfulness, fidelity to those promises. And so we, you know, Christ, we know he is worthy of our faith and all of our confidence because of the fact that every... His every he he consistently chose to not sin. Consistently chose to be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Amen. which was fidelity, faithfulness into the will of the Father. And the fact that he did that, we know he's he's he is worthy of all our praise and confidence and faith. And then you also have the faith of God in Christ doing that very thing. During the during his whole earthly ministry, God the Father up there was trusting and b b trusting that Christ was going to do everything He said He was going to do, and He did. Uh, yeah. It was a done, and it, you know, of course, in God's mind, before He even created the world, it was a done deal before they even did it. Yeah. Um, but then you have His faith. He called faithful is He that calleth you. Faithful is God the Father who calls you through that gospel, and He He's faithful because He will do. Deliver on every promise he ever gave to you. We know he has already delivered on the promises of what he made us in his son just through experience of feeling that peace and that joy and that abounding hope in us as a result of our salvation and what he made and the power of the Spirit working in us through the study of his word. Amen. Um, so, you know, I totally, you know, appreciate Justin Johnson's ministry, but on that, I, I would yeah. not, I would not agree. Um, uh, Dan says Luke 9 50 and Jesus said unto him forbid him not for he that is not against us is for us yep and that's the that's the uh, in the spiritual realm that would that would be pretty cut and dry <laughs> you're either one of two two things you're either on one of two sides um, uh, Dave Perry also uh, highlights uh, Galatians 2.20. Amen. Amen. Chris Nelson uh, highlights 2 Corinthians 12.10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I love the verse uh, when it talks, it talks about, we use it for eternal security, but right. where he says that we can deny him, but he cannot deny us. Right. And boy, you talk about the faith of, you know, God, the father, God, the son and God, the Holy Spirit, right. you know, that he cannot, you know, his we I, you know, we talk about it. I, I love the verse in Titus where, where it says in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And, and what a verse that is a confident expectation of a sure coming event, yeah. knowing that it's his faithfulness. Right. And all we're doing is saying, God, I believe what you say, right. and I'm placing my trust and faith in what you say and what the Lord Jesus Christ did and the Holy Spirit convicting and converting me. 
And, and what a blessing that is to know that, that my eternal life is not based on what I do. Right. It's based on what he's already done. Right. What a blessing that is. Right. Right. Uh, uh, I love that. Um, and he also quotes uh, verse 9 too. That's right. Of Second Corinthians 12. Love that, brother. There's a lot to be said there. Damon is uh, quoting... Uh, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified Amen. with Christ. I live by Woo. the faith of, of the, the Son, Son of God, God who loved me and gave himself for Amen. me. Amen. That's awesome. That is it. Um, it's one of our verses. I that's, love it. that's right. It's all about him. When we understand that it's based on his faithfulness, then the, the focus and all the praise and the glory and the honor, we cannot boast in anything that we've done. It all goes to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's why it's such a blessing to know that our message, the gospel of the grace of God, is the only gospel that I know right now, and of course the gospel of time past, but that really didn't discriminate. I mean, it was to, to the Jews first. Right. But our gospel is one that salvation is unto all and upon all them that believe right you know not work not be sorry not you know anything based on what we can do or any of our performance it's based on what he's given to us right what a blessing that is to know that right um justin cox is in the house how you doing Amen, brother brother uh karen says uh i'm curious did richard's answer to the roman 7 9 question have any persuasion on your position none whatsoever in fact i got up and uh, preached our position on set roman 7 saturday morning at the conference didn't get any complaints about that either uh. um the uh, uh and, and I, I had a conversation with david about it. david and i are very much on the same page about roman 7 um, uh, Justin said, uh, uh, Romans 3, 3, for what if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without Amen. effect? Right, there you exactly. Go. And there here, you go, you, here you have a verse that is talking about the faithfulness of God the Father. Hmm. The faithfulness of the Father. Uh, I, I kept, and I can't remember, I, I was at one point talking with Fred about doing a message on the faithfulness of the entire godhead amen i couldn't find a verse really that would just nail down faithfulness of the holy spirit but you know he's faithful yeah you know he's faithful because you know he's faithful he was faithful in the in the uh inspiration of the holy scriptures and you know he's faithful in teaching those scriptures to yeah. everybody that sits down and studies his word yeah he was uh, faithful in the doctrine of preservation we know that so, he's faithful uh, in terms of out. the intercession for prayer yeah um, he's, uh, you know, the, so arguably, I mean, it's not just the faith of Christ. There's a lot of emphasis on that, and it, as well there should be because there's a lot of emphasis on that in Paul's epistles. But there's also verses talking about the faithfulness of the Father. Faithful. Father's faith in his son to carry out what he had, what they had planned to do from the beginning, before they even created the world. His faithfulness in his son, uh, uh, um, uh, of, I'm sorry, faithfulness in in the deliverance of all his own promises to you. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He will faithfully give eternal life to every soul that come, accepts his gospel and comes to him in faith, and he will faithfully give all the, the uh, inheritance, being joint heirs with Christ, and faithfully delivering on all that glory to come. Amen. The Father is faithful also. Yeah, don't forget I'd love the, Holy, that. the Holy Spirit is faithful in intercession of prayer. <laughs> right. <laughs> How important that is. And uh, we know, and we always say it, that, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't work apart from the Word of God. Right. And the Word of God doesn't work apart from the Holy Spirit. Right. I mean, the two go hand in hand. Uh, Justin says, good match with Galatians 2.20, showing the contrast between the believer and God's faith. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um um, I and my father are one, Dan says. Right, totally. Uh, Damon uh, quotes Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's right. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 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 Love that. 
Uh, Amy Stewart says salvation is about is all about what God did in Christ. That's right. Amen. That's right. What the entire Godhead did chose to do together before they created everything, what they accomplished wow. at Calvary, and then what they accomplish in you the moment you come to faith in Him. I love that. I love those thoughts. Um, uh, Justin says head and shoulders works great for Mike. Yeah, he's got that. For me? Yeah, he's got that nice poofy How's hair going know? on there. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate he, that. You must have mentioned it somewhere, sometime uh, before. I, I don't know. Had, well, he he had to he had to go get a haircut too because it was starting to stick up and everything in the back. And I'm like, I love the cow <laughs> legs. And stuff. I think that's hilarious. You know, I I did pray last night. <laughs> you know, I said, Lord, when I wake up this morning, please let my hair be really nice so I don't have to spend a lot of time grooming it. So, you know, there's an answer to prayer, brother. See that? Uh, Amy Stewart said, uh, Hebrews, in faith in Christ as Messiah, body of Christ, faith in the finished cross work of Christ. Amen. Amen. Love that. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, 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 Damon... Um, Cites John one forty one. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which being interpreted the Christ, right? The anointed, the anointed one is what Christ means. Yep. Uh, Karen says, Mike, how is your health? We know your heart is full of love, but what are the doctors saying? <laughs> <laughs> Remember how I said, Karen, I, uh, I give thanks in all things, not for all things. Yeah. I, I've got a couple of issues, and thanks for bringing that up. But, you know, I, I went e either way. If I'm, you know, you know, if physically I die, I'm absent from the body to be present with the Lord so I rejoice in that <laughs> no you're not allowed to sorry no no <laughs> no, know, no, no, no 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 that doesn't happen to, to no. live to live as Christ to die as gain no, for and you, not for much, me brother and, 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 and that's <laughs> that it gonna happen at it's all it's just another day of grace and peace <laughs> and I pray everything is good with you and and a lot of the other saints out there but thank you for asking uh, I, I will get a couple of things done uh, the the main thing is uh, getting a stent, uh, which I'll probably get within the next month. So I'll let everybody know how that goes. But right now, my blood, I'm getting enough blood. And as long as I'm getting enough blood to my head where I can think, um, I'll be fine. <laughs> or you can think. Yeah. I don't know. You're thinking pretty well. So far, I am, brother. I'm, I'm probably on half half blood flow right now. But um, no, I'm doing good. Uh, the uh, mic is... Uh, at home been hilarious i've been uh telling people stories about mike uh okay so what after monday's <laughs> podcast mike's like mike's like hey joel let me give me send me the link to that oh, universalist no. i gotta hear this i gotta hear this <laughs> message and stuff and so <laughs> he comes out maybe 30 minutes later, i can't take it anymore <laughs> i'm uh, not gonna listen and then he goes back and listens some more and he came back ranting and raving about uh, quite a few aspects of that message, uh, <laughs> and then he came back. Just uh, I, <laughs> oh. it was hilarious. And the um, other thing that got him is toward the end when the um, oh. when the, when he when he did the. You remember when he did that photo of the starving child? Yes, that's really and, got and, me. And said and accused us of saying that that child starving who never heard the gospel is going to go to hell. Yeah. Uh, oh man, Mike had some choice words for that, and uh, and the uh, and the and the fact is, he knows that's a lie. He knows we don't teach that. None of us believe that whatsoever. We all have very strong opinions about the age of uh, accountability. Yes, and so he's just lying through his teeth in order to paint a portrait portrait of us that isn't true. He's uh, doing what a lot of people are doing. Yeah. What lot? What the? What some people do is just scorched earth, tear everybody down to make myself feel look good. And well, it's just it's just insane what he was doing, and it was just pure evil to to yeah. label us like that. Well, the other side of that, and I'm sure every one of us that are listening now, and especially Dan, brother Dan out there, I came from a Catholic uh, background, and so uh, you know my my grandparents were involved in that also, and I know that when I heard the gospel of the grace of God, and I was just on fire for the gospel. And I want to share that gospel with everybody I loved. Amen. And uh, that's one of the first things I did. I just went to every relative I could. And uh, I just went and shared the gospel of the grace of God with them. Because I knew what, 
I knew what Catholicism taught, but I do understand that there are brothers and sisters in Christ that are still involved in Catholicism. So you have to be very careful. But I think what this ROI, is that what you call it? <laughs> ROB or whatever. Um, when I, when, when, ROI, uh, rod of okay. iron. Yeah. Once I listen. The universalist, whatever. Yeah. So, so yeah. The, the other point of that was I knew my grandmother was a sweet woman. I mean, you know, she never beat me or did anything really bad to me. And I know she was going to church every Sunday and everything like that. And so I was asked the question at one time uh, by one of my Catholic relatives. And they said, are you telling me, and I think it was my aunt. And she said, are, Michael, are you trying to t tell me or are you trying to share with me something uh, that you're trying to say that if I don't believe in that, uh, that if I haven't placed my trust and faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and that alone for my salvation, and I'm thinking maybe works are involved or these other things, are you telling me that I'm going to hell? Right. And at that time, you got to understand that I had just finally, after understanding the faith of Christ getting saved, right. I'm so excited. Right. And when she asked me that question, I'm like, you got to believe that. <laughs> so basically what I'm telling her is right. if you're trusting in works in that, you're going to hell. Right. And I didn't quite say that to her, right. but that was what what she got out of the conversation was he's saying I'm going to hell. So what this guy is saying on the video is he was trying to say the same type thing that if you think God is going to sin somebody to hell that is at the age of accountability and does understand what sin is. If you're saying that God is going to send them to hell because they have not placed their trust and faith in the right. shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to hell. Right. His answer was no. Right. There's nobody that's going to hell. Right. Because then after that, he brings up Paul. <laughs> and then he says that Hitler, that right. Paul was worse than Hitler. I mean, and I'm like, wait a minute. How many man. millions of people did Paul kill? I don't oh, remember. I don't know. But <laughs> I do know that I was born in an orphanage in Germany. And I knew a lot of things. And I knew yeah. one, th one thing not to tell people was when I first came to America and I got a little older, I didn't want to tell anybody I was He's from German. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness, I had Jewish friends. Right. You know? Right. And uh, so w when I hear this guy, he's basically saying, <laughs> all right, I, I've read, let's take the Pope. <laughs> I told you to get right. work it up. Let's take the Pope and let's have the Pope, <laughs> let's have the Pope sitting right between you and I. Totally. And you love him so much. He's not a brother in Christ. But he's a friend. I would right? still love him. You just, would love just because, him because, yeah, right. and you would want to share the gospel of the totally grace of would. God. And God knows I've shared with so many Catholics. But you're <laughs> you're sitting with the Pope, and you're telling him everything. Right, right, right. And this is Pope. All you have to do in childlike faith <laughs> is just simply believe and trust that Christ died for your sins. Amen. And I know the Pope would admit that he's a sinner. <laughs> I know he, he couldn't just tell you yeah. that he's never told a lie in his whole life. You right. know, there's right. no, you know, come on. Totally. You, you know, he'd have to admit, yeah, I, 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 I've lied in my life. Right. And then we'd take him to Revelation if he, right. you know. Right. But, and so if the Pope said, Brother Joel or Pastor Joel, if I don't believe your message, where am I going to spend eternity? I think right now, this would not be a time that you would say, listen, only God knows where you're going to spend eternity. I think you and I, if we're given the gospel, we would say to him, Pope, listen, I love you, brother. I mean, not brother, because he's not a brother. But I love you, friend, and I don't want to see you go to hell. Right. And there's only one mediator between God and man. It's not you. Right. It is, you know, it is Christ Jesus. And if you don't believe this offering of this free gift, you are going to go to hell. I would, I would have no qualms in saying that to yeah. him. But I would say it in love. Right. Because then I, we have planted and, and watered 
and it's up to the Holy Spirit to give it the increase. Right. And I just would pray that when he goes to bed at night, he would just not be able to sleep. Right. You know, that the Holy Spirit would just be stirring in him and saying, you know what? I believe what they said. I'm trusting that Christ died for my sins. So I, I just leave that. But when this this guy, you know, that we and whether or not he's even a brother in Christ, I don't know. Right. I, I, but I, I, those I, two things in his video with the child. Right. That we would say that that <laughs> child is going to hell. Right. And that my, my response to any Catholic now, if I really don't know them, is if they asked me about their grandparents or their parents or their brother, sister, whatever, my response would be, wait a minute, you know, I don't know where they're spending eternity. At one time, they, have, they may have heard the gospel of the grace of God, and they may have trusted in that. So they may be with the Lord. Right. I, I can't tell you that where they are. Right. You know, that would be my response there. Right. Right. Uh, I can't believe how subdued and short that response was. <laughs> that video, man. Well, that you, was amazing, dude. Well, you, t you told me to eat up 10 minutes of the I was podcast. Like, I'm like, no. but I got to get Mike going. You, you've got to uh, <laughs> listen. Pastor Joel yeah. <laughs> is so, you know, we talk about carefrontation, not confrontation. But there are times in the body of Christ where you need to mark them that cause division. And that doesn't mean just call out their doctrine, because right. unless you know who that person is, you'll never know where to go to find out about that doctrine. Right. So when we mention someone's name, and I know Joel, God, you talk about a brother that has love for everyone. Um, he's not, he's trying to warn the saints and all I would say is if you don't really understand where Joel and I are coming from right now, I think, Joel, you may even put a link, but I would suggest that anybody go to listen to this video and listen to about uh -oh. the listen to about the last five to ten minutes of it. And if you don't believe it's an abomination and a heretic, <laughs> then then you don't really understand the gospel of the grace of God. Um, and I just say that to you, to anybody listening in love, <laughs> because this this person needs, you know, he needs to be preaching to one person, yeah. and that's himself and nobody else. Uh, Dan says Mike has a really slick shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Dan. Appreciate that. Uh, We're the Blues Brothers in a way. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, church says needed the reminder of glorying in my infirmities today. Don't we all? Amen. Don't we all? Got to do that every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you have, um, and you have in that verse. Oops, I don't know what's. I didn't mean to do that. Um, uh, and you have in that verse, he says, "Most gladly, therefore." Will I rather glory in my infirmities that Amen. the power of Christ may? That tells you that the power of Christ may rest upon me. It tells you he was predisposed and already happy to do that very thing before he did it. Mm. He was predisposed Amen. gladly to glory in his infirmities. I mean, there's, there's layers to that beyond just, oh, yeah, I need to glory in my infirmities. This is, he was predisposed in joy and gladness to do that very thing anytime he wow. needed to. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. I, I, really, I, I really, I find that whole section amazing. We quote 2 Corinthians 12 a ton, but yet it's deeper than the way it's often presented. Um, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The, and you have that cause and effect here. The glorying in the infirmities is the cause and the effect is the power of Christ resting upon me. So by glorying in your infirmities, what you know, he is he is glorifying God for the sufficiency of his grace, for everything he made him in his son in order to make him able to endure those hard times with joy and gladness. And the result was that the power would rest upon him. Amen. The power that was working through him would be visible to everybody around him. And not only that, you have that psychological effect, that emotional effect on yourself Amen. by glorying about the sufficiency of God's grace. 
uh, while you're going through hard times. So it's yeah. it's inc- it's wonderfully deep. If mm. you just you could take that verse and just meditate upon it all day long and come That's up with it. endless riches out of that verse. Yeah, um, for for those of you you saints out there that are as old as I am and going through some of the physical ailments and some of the pain and suffering always if you haven't memorized romans 8 18 for i reckon that the (laughs) sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us right i i quote that many many times and if you haven't put that to memory i tell you what next time you're feeling some pain quote that verse and see if that doesn't help a little bit right Uh, When Paul says, uh, most gladly, therefore, you know, he had received that spiritual truth about the sufficiency of his grace from the Lord. And he received that truth from the Lord with great pleasure. You know, he didn't throw a tantrum that God was was unwilling to intervene in that circumstance. He received that truth about the sufficiency of his grace with pleasure. You know, gratitude, grateful for that truth. And as a result... He then would count it a privilege to be afflicted so much so that he will glory in his infirmities because, it, because it's, it's when he's going through those infirmities that he can showcase the power Lord. and the sufficiency of that grace that he already had, mm-hmm. which is just amazing. That is. Now, what does the expression mean exactly? When he says glory, he means he's going to boast. And what is what does he mean by infirmities? And did you know that infirmities is translated from the same Greek word that was translated as weakness? Anything that makes you weak. Mm-hmm. And here I think we get a prime example mm-hmm. of what the translators told us in 1611 prologue about how they translated the text. They didn't always use the same English word to translate the same Greek word every time. They, they allowed for variance. So rather than say weakness twice in this verse, they opted to say weakness and infirmities, which means the same thing. And Webster would define infirmities as weakness in every sense of the word. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of times it's not just the weakness of the the physical body and and that. Right. A lot of times it's it's the emotions. You, you can be, you can have weak and ang- right. where you're weak in anger and right. You know you're you thrash out at other people and, right. and you're going wait a minute that's not who I am in Christ. Right. You know? Right. I totally. need to hide hide the word in my heart right. so that it will overcome this emotion. Right. You so e- exactly any it, well, weakness in any sense of the word is what he means by infirmity and so you have the Webster talks about an unsound or unhealthy state of the body, no. weakness, feebleness. He talks about a weakness of mind, mm-hmm. uh, failing, fault, foible, uh, a weakness of resolution, you know, a, any particular disease, malady applied rather to chronic than to violent diseases, a defect, an imperfection, weakness as the infirmities of a constitution of government. Paul's saying that mm. In every sense that he may be weak, he will glory in that weakness. Amen, brother. That was good. And notice, and notice what he says in this expression. Notice, notice he doesn't say, I rather glory about my infirmities, mm-hmm. in my or I rather glory that I have infirmities. Mm-hmm. In my no, he says, I'd rather glory in my yep, infirmities. There it is. Amen. Right? Yep. So he will glory, he will boast while he is in his state of weakness, whatever that may be. So, hmm. you know, you can't help but wonder what kind of state of weakness is he talking about here. Paul defines it as for us in the next verse, in verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in insults, in, I'm sorry, in reproaches which is basically insults in necessities when he lacks the mm-hmm. basic needs of life yeah in persecutions when someone mm-hmm. you know inflicts pain or suffering upon him for his faith or in distresses for Christ's sake when he is in danger for Christ's sake and then he reiterates that same point he just made in the previous verse for when I am weak then am I strong amen 
Having said all of that, what is it that Paul is boasting about when he's weak? He was actually developing this thought in 2 Corinthians before we ever even got to these passages. You go through all of uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, all that stuff that he was, all the, the sufferings that he went through, all of which leads you up to this particular chapter, and it's the sufficiency of his grace that Amen. enables him to be able to get through all, all those periods of weakness. Uh, which I find absolutely amazing. Um, uh, I'll, go, I'll, I'll just stop there and go, go back. But he was glorying. He was, but essentially, the sufficiency of his grace is, is the, the entire package of grace that, mm. that God has given you, which essentially means not just eternal life, but the life he's given you, in you, the li- the, the everything he made you in his son, all the hope he's provided you with, uh, after we're gone, all of that, the entire package of grace, all of which is sufficient to help you get through those hard times. Amen. Paul, and not to mention the fact that part of that package of grace is the power of God, and Paul was glorifying the power of Christ's life living out through him that enabled him to glorify God and rejoice every single time he went through a trial. Or every time he was weak, I'm going to shut up, or I'm just wow. never going to stop talking about that. <laughs> um, yeah, you're making too much of Paul, brother. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Amy Stewart says, Second uh, Thessalonians three sixteen. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. That's right. Amen. The Lord be with you all. I love that. Um. Church says, what is the best resource for understanding and helping someone else understand mid-Acts dispensationalism? Hmm. Um, I think there's, I have, uh, I think the, the development of a, of a believer, a, a new believer needs to follow the same structure as the book of, a uh, book of Romans. Uh, you know, you first, the first thing Paul does is deal, deal with the, the, the gospel, the second thing, after they understand the gospel and they understand, you know, the eternal life that they've received by faith, mm-hmm. the next thing they need to understand is who they are in Christ, which is, which that's Romans 1 to 5, and then in Romans 6, Paul, the first thing Paul teaches, who you are in Christ. Yep. Dead, buried, risen with the Son. The old Jew gone forever. The, the, you have now been literally freed from the power and the dominion of sin over your soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the second thing that that person needs to understand first uh, after the gospel. Yes. You, can't, you can't function unless you know who you are in Christ. Amen. And then what, so you have basically from six to eight, you have the uh, identification section, really. And then after that, what do you get in Romans? You get then you get dispensational truth from Romans nine to eleven, and then from twelve, basically to the end of the book, I'd argue uh, sixteen. You have the application of it all, uh, application verses. But in um, uh, uh, but in the it's not until after they come to understand who they are in Christ, then they understand uh, the basics of right division. Uh, yeah. And I think I think the emphasis has always been wrong mm-hmm. uh, in grace. Uh, you, somebody gets saved, and then the first thing they teach, and Paul's your apostle, you need to understand right division. You've got to understand. No, 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 no. Follow Paul's example. Teach him identification first and foremost, Amen. and then teach him right division. Yeah. Um, I I am a living example of someone that understood right division one year prior to me getting saved i wasn't saved uh, because of right division right i was saved under romans 3 22 right i still did not understand justification right and i think that is the most important uh, to make sure that whoever we're trying to get right division to uh if, if that's what you're trying to teach is that you have to take them and, and pastor joel says it all the time we say it um, you got to take them back to the cross. Let's first, because if they're not saved and you're taking them to right division, what you know what you're teaching your, or who your audience is, it's a natural man. Right. It, it's not, he's not going to understand the things of God. I mean, he can read all about, you know, right division. But the, but the bottom line is God our Savior says he would have all men to be saved. It's not all men to come to right division. 
I mean, we come to right division when we come to the knowledge of the truth after we understand our justification. Right. And now we have to get into our sanctification, identification. Identification is first needed and sanctification will follow that. And then service comes after that when we get into Romans chapter 12 through 16. So uh, don't focus so much on right division because I have found out you start talking to somebody that's not saved and you're talking about right division, you're going to be in so many arguments with that individual because what they're being taught is totally different than what you're trying to bring to them. You're trying to bring them to, into a saving grace. And, you know, you, you don't do that. And I'm not saying some people haven't been saved by first learning right division. But I would say that is probably a very small percentage. Right. Uh, then, uh, so, um, okay, so I have, um, I do have a small, like uh, in Empowered by His Grace, I have a, uh, there's a prayer chapter that goes and offers up the basics of right division. Uh, once they read Empowered by His Grace, I think they, they ought to do, um, you know, something like Things That Differ. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great way. Uh, that's a book that lit all of our fires uh, when when we read it years ago. Mm -hmm. It's still a great book. Yeah. Uh, it has a great punch to it. Um, the uh, There's also Joel Fink's The Mystery, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. There's a variety of ways uh, that somebody could come into mid acts dispensationalism, but I think, you know, the conversation should start with identification, not Paul's our apostle. Uh, but those, but then again, there are saints who really understand the, um, you know, they understand they they know there are problems with their own theology. They know there are contradictions they can't explain. And I think the best way to bring them into mid acts dispensationalism is, I think, as as tone, love. The manner in which you approach them yeah. is as important as the argument you make. Amen. You know, because um, because if 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 somebody comes in, uh, you know, argues with them like some of the trolls that we have coming in and arguing with us, nobody's going to be persuaded of anything. You know, you got to have that gentleness, meekness thing going on in the in the tone and manner in which you try to address that other person and try to help bring them into the knowledge of the truth. Um, Amen. So, I mean, it's I, there's no set path, that, one path that would work for everybody, but uh, make sure that if somebody with whom you may be trying to have that outreach, uh, just make sure that tone and that love is there and yeah. that concern for them. Uh, Mike uh, had a thing he used to say from the uh, early on in the yeah. podcast, is nobody, care, nobody cares about what you know until they know that you care about them. Amen. Um, I think that's still true. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, I would just uh, throw that out there also. Yeah, and I was uh, going to say one other thing is if, if, if it is if somebody that it's saved and you ever have a chance to, you know, do a Bible study with them and they don't really understand right division, if you just take them to the book of Ephesians and just say, talk about the sevenfold unity. Right. And say, how can we all come together in the unity of the faith? And that then that person, you can ask them that question. And they'll say, well, yeah, you know, I don't understand why there's so many different denominations. And so many say, well, if you get water baptized, you're saved. If you don't get water baptized, you're not saved. And this verse says one baptism, one Lord, one mm -hmm. faith. And it says, how can we all come into the unity of the faith? I think that's a perfect time where you can say, hey, let me talk to you about rightly dividing the scriptures. Right. You know, right. that would be a perfect opportunity. Right. Um Amy Stewart says, "Oops, the word and is not in that verse." I know. You, I, um, the uh, I knew Amy was just she's adding words to the, to the scriptures. It's a it's scary thing. Yeah. Uh -uh. Uh, uh, Dan calls Amy. Dan says, "Amy, you heretic." That's right. Uh, as the Bible Church uh, time passed, but now ages to come. Yeah, I love that approach too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, church says Amy is uh, manipulating the very word of God. Exactly, exactly. We tolerate her anyway. Oh, you know, my goodness. She's, it's, yeah. it's tough having her in in the group with us, but <laughs> um, she is a beautiful saint. Hey, we got Lourdes hey, in the Lourdes. house. How you doing, Lourdes? Yeah. <laughs> Amy says, "I know I'm an, I'm under a curse now." <laughs> um, 
Uh, Karen says that question on soul physicality, the question originated from an old colleague who wrote a paper in college proving that upon death there is an instant loss of a small amount of weight. Oh, I have heard that. Yeah, I have heard that. Um, I find that fascinating. Um, yeah. Um, Justin says, uh, I think that meant as the man Jesus did not know, but as the man Jesus did not know, but God was in Christ and the spirit in him knew all things. Um, I'm thinking that might be a reference to Christ and the not knowing when his second coming would be. Um, you know, I think um, I, to a certain degree, I think the Lord actually chose would not would choose know. to not know certain things mm -hmm. um and i and it's not and i don't want to give anybody the impression i'm i'm all about uh, uh open theism uh but you know if i was in the lord's position i wouldn't want to know everything either i would just say father you keep that information you know it i will not know it because I can operate on, on faith in you. I could show you how much I trust you because I don't need to know everything. You have in that moment too, like when uh, Abraham was um, uh, Abraham had was asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And then the angel of the Lord stopped him. And uh, the Lord said, Now I know that thou feareth God. Well, didn't he know that before? Didn't he know? And I think the Lord wanted to not know the future in that moment so he could be surprised in that moment to see how it plays out he could be in the moment with abraham and be surprised as how it plays so i think it's um, how can you not how can you choose to not know things apparently god can do that but i don't think god he doesn't do that about everything he knows a lot of future stuff you know but on a few occasions he'll 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 go a little open open view uh, why not? God the Father, it's the Father that knows everything from the end to the beginning, from the beginning to the end. And um, so why not operate on faith in the Father and, uh, you know, be a little bit open view at times. Um, but they, he's not open view about everything and it's not, don't, don't, get, don't get the wrong idea. Uh, but, um, you know, when, all the, when the Father knows the end from the beginning, knows, he knows every soul that's going to come to him in faith uh, uh, during the age of grace. And he knew that soul before he even created the foundation of the world, whom he did foreknow. He knew you before you were, before the world was ever created. And he knew you would come to him by faith. He didn't force you to do it, but he knew you would come to, he knew you personally before you were ever born. And he moved heaven and earth to create this age of grace so that he could have that relationship with you because he loves you. You know, I think that's amazing. Um, Does, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm I rambling. A, on, no, I have a question gonna, for you on what you just said, and if you can answer it. But um, are, are, does not all the Godhead have the same characteristics or same character? The uh, whole the whole Godhead are they not all all they're, three? Yeah. They're omnipotent. Yeah, all they're knowing. all knowing. Right. So, can you say what you just said? If that Christ chose not to know some things, right? How else can you explain him not knowing when no, his own second coming is going to be? Yeah, because yeah. I'm just wondering, I don't know. wondering because someone would might come back on you and say, "Wait a minute, you know, he's he's omnipotent. He, right. he knows everything. Right. How can you say that he, you know, he chose not to? Yeah, to know some, and I, I really some when I, when I was yeah. a teenager, I really struggled with that line that he gave to Abraham. Now I know that thou fearest God. Well, it in in pastors would say, well, that's just a statement of accommodation. Well, if it's a statement of accommodation, that would be a lie. Mm -hmm. But he's saying he didn't know yeah. that thou fearest God until now, when he always knew that. Oh. That's a lie. That can't. It can't be that way. Mm -hmm. The only the only rational uh, conclusion to me in that story is that. Christ chose to not chose know how this was going to play out, gotcha. and what he said was the absolute truth. Okay, um, I don't, I don't know any other way to. to yeah, if, if I hear something yeah. better, I'm, no, I'm totally like, open I, to that. But, no, I, I like that. Um, yeah, I would like to hear uh, Hal's uh, viewpoint on that too, and Fred's, just to see what they would have to respond yeah, on that. Yeah, I, 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 we talked about it a couple of years yeah. ago, but I can't remember I probably what they forgot said. It. <laughs> There's so many words yeah. have been said, I can't remember that, it all. That's the thing that got yeah. me. Well, wait a minute. He knows everything. Are you telling me she's choosing not to know, right? 
uh, and that would be God's choice. I mean, who are we to right. say what God can do and what he can't do? Right. right? Uh, yeah. Justin has done a full lesson. Uh, Karen here, uh, returning back to Faith of Christ, uh, says Justin has done a full lesson on Christ not having faith and mentions it periodically in various sermons. He says that faith requires believing things that are not seen, and Jesus knew everything. Well, I, I wouldn't say he knew everything. Uh, we, I mean, we just went through just, went through uh, just the one point know. about the yeah. he didn't know when the second coming would be. Mm -hmm. Of course, he knew the will of the Father, but you can't. That's not something you can see. Yeah. Uh, he knew the future, uh, but he still had to make it. It still boils down to the choice he made mm -hmm. about how he was, what he was going to carry out on that cross, and the choice he made was obedience to the will of the Father, operating on faith in that will, and not to mention the fact that everything Christ did. He was operating on faith in the Father. He mm -hmm. and, and Christ operating on faith is what helps him to relate to us, also operating on faith in the will of the Father. Um, the, the, that's the, the very, which is why you have Christ speaking the words of the Father all throughout the, uh, the, his earthly ministry. He is operating on faith in the will and the direction of the Father. Amen. Without, without knowing all the time how it's going to play out. And I think, and I, and so, every, and so, you, in the in the Lord's earthly ministry, you have the words of the Father. He, he said, uh, "The words of the Father that are being spoken through Christ." The only time you hear Christ speaking His own words is in, when He's praying back to the Father. Mm. You have Him also operating in close synergy with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the ones yeah. who who actually carried out those miracles in Christ. In that, while He's manifest in the flesh, it's the operation of the entire Godhead working together. But Christ could not do that without operating on faith in the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. It's a choice of obedience to uh, to to carry out the will of the Father, and um, yeah. He had to have faithfulness. You know, and you think too. You, he had yeah. to have faithfulness in in what he was going to accomplish. He yeah. had to have faithfulness in the fact that his him doing what the Father wanted him to do would achieve the results that they were intending to get. Mm -hmm. And he had to willfully do it all perfectly in order to get those results. That, it, you know, he's he is he is fully God, but he is also still fully man, which means he requires faith on his part. Amen. And I don't think you can have the expression faith of Christ in Scripture without, yeah. without him actually having proven his own faithfulness in his obedience to the Father during the Lord's earthly ministry. Yeah. I'm not explaining it well. No, I think that's great because, you know, I'm thinking back to, you know, how much faith he had in the Scriptures. Right, right. He had to learn the Scriptures, right? I mean, right. you know, he's reading the Scriptures, and he, he understood that he was going to come back because he could read Jeremiah 31, right? right. And see, you know, when the, when the uh, now, <laughs> new covenant was going to be set up. But, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he knew how to rightly divide scripture right. because when he was preaching that one time and yeah. we're going to talk about his death and everything else, yeah. you know, he closes the book yeah. in Isaiah, you know? Yeah. And no. uh, he, he understood what he was going to go through. No, I had, um, I, and, and Karen, you're welcome to bring up Justin all day. I just, it's fine with me. I, I do love Justin Johnson. There's been a, I, I, you know, the Tuesday's podcast, there's been a lot of chatter about Justin because we, we had talked about it. The problem's not with Justin for me. I, I, I love Justin. He's not perfect, and neither am I. Amen. Neither is Mike. There's nobody here that's perfect, you know, and, I, yeah. and, it, and I'm, you know, just because I disagree with him does not mean I have some, any kind of personal animosity, animosity against him at all. I, I, I legitimately don't. Uh, and he's, he's got a great mind. He, he is a very thoughtful guy. Um, of course, there. Uh, um, but you know, my issue is about promoting. You know, because uh, Justin has such ties with McLean. I'm just, I just, I don't want to ever promote mm -hmm. Terry McLean. Um, and there are things about Terry McLean I'm, I can't, I can't say. It's, 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 um, it's rough. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I do appreciate his ministry. I do love him as a brother in Christ. Um, and. Um, you know, and so my disagreement with him is not, it does not, is not in any way some sort of personal animosity or anything like that with Justin. I love the guy. Yeah. When, he, when, his, when his church burned down, we prayed for him. Uh, but there are things about Terry that just, I, you mm. know, I can't, I, I can't, I can't go there. 
Um, yeah. And uh, in any event, Amy Stewart says, I'm not sure I would agree with Justin on that. Karen says, to me, Justin is missing the further expanse of that word. It's like people that can only define baptism as what method of, as, as that method of getting wet. You're right. Right. I, I totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. I don't, you know, I, I understand where he's coming from. It's a, di- it's a different, it's a different point of view, but um, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't fully make sense to me. Um, and um, I'm not, I, I can't go there with him on that. I, I mean, I, to say, you know, it's, it would just be weird to say, to, to spend time talking about the faith of Christ and then say he didn't have faith. Oh. You know, that's, yeah. that's weird. I don't, oh. I, I can't do that. Yeah, I mean, I can't know? either. If he didn't have faith and, and it, it wasn't the faithfulness of Christ, you know, I, I just... Huh. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't go there either. It's I mean, a weird there's thing. Too, there's yeah. too many places in Scripture that it talks about the faith of Christ. Right. So, I, I mean, you know, God's a master communicator. Uh, right. He just, oh, yeah. He just doesn't put words in there that, you know, if we can't take the faith of Christ and know that that's, he's not only the object of our faith, he's the subject of our faith. Right. You know, right. and uh, yes, he had faithfulness Dan in says, everything that he did. Right. Dan says, as 100% man, Jesus had faith. As 100% God, Jesus had everything. Yep. I mean, you know, and, and, and the other hard part about his faithfulness during his earthly ministry is just how to explain the incarnation, you know, both fully God, fully man. How do you explain that? It's, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're entering into that territory of the something so be, it's beyond comprehension, all of it. Um, but I do believe he had faith in the will of the father. Now, you can't see his will. Hmm. He knew what the will was. Yeah. And he knew what that will was supposed to accomplish, and he had to have faith in the Father to in order to be in order to learn obedience and to be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Um, so, uh, you know, how else can you determine his fidelity that makes him worthy of our faith, mm-hmm. except for his faith in his Father to go all the way to the cross? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Church says you're hurting my brain, Dan. We have been dealing with, we have been having to live with Dan for two years now almost. We're going to come on two years in March. Yeah, uh, yeah I that's know, hard man. To believe. Yeah, you have Dan in the live oh, chat with you. Oh, yeah. man. That's hard Get to Get some aspirin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, I, I guess he doesn't, just doesn't have better things to do. Oh, I don't man. know. But I love him because he comes from the same background I do. So I yeah. think that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's got a ginormous TV. Yeah. Uh, we used to we used to make jokes about that TV. That TV is yeah. the size of, I mean, it's like literally the size of a warehouse. It's just enormous. I mean, we are the size of like the Statue of Liberty on that thing. It's just amazing. He's got the biggest TV ever. Um, and Dan's got the most epic beard. He's got a grace-loving wife and a Gentile puppy that gives him love on occasion uh, from his... Uh, uh, while it, during the podcast, I mm-hmm. think he also has. Doesn't he have arthritis or something? And he has a hard hmm. time typing. So it's it could be uh, the fact that we see these uh, chats here is a bit of a miracle. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. Maybe he could does it. He's, by, he's got a spiritual gift of some kind. No, he does yeah. a voiceover. Um, um, probably. Uh, hey, we got Lori Howell in the house. Hey, how Lori. are you? Amy Stewart says Philippians two eight. Amen. Amen. And being uh, found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Church says, just more proof of the power of God, I guess. Damon uh, quotes 1 Corinthians um, uh, 1, 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You got to remember, too, when Jesus came on this earth, he didn't come as God. He came as a servant. You know, he, he came to save mankind, uh, pay for the sins of the world, but he came with a servant's heart, you know? Right. I mean, uh, to look at that, I mean, you know, um, I, I just throw that in, but uh, and that's the, the heart that we should have is, is a servant's heart. Oh, I totally agree. And you have in that... Uh, Second Thessalonians two fourteen about that calling, he called you by our gospel to what, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I love that expression mm-hmm. to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God, <laughs> when God called, when when God the Father called you by that gospel, He wanted you 
to obtain the glory, glory of his son. Amen. Look at what my son accomplished for you. He accomplished, he, he achieved sin and death, and I want you to receive the glory of his victory. And by receiving that glory of his victory, uh, you are going to be, in my you are going to be one with him. One with him. Bone of his bones, flesh, flesh of his flesh, flesh, which is going to make you a joint heir with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you everything. Amen. Literally. I want you to yeah. have the glory of my son. How amazing is that? God yeah. the Father, loving you so much, he wants you to have his glory. Yeah, one of the terms that I love to use is when you hear that term, and I know you just used it, and Fred does it a lot, and I, I do too. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. I would like to say that we were placed in living union with the Lord Jesus right, Christ. Right, right. You think of that. We were just, you were put into living union with the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that your old man, no way. Oh, excuse me. Your old man, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Not your old man and you, yeah. uh, your new man put in living union with the Lord Jesus Christ. He would not accept yeah. that. He doesn't. Just, he doesn't want you yeah. forever basking in his son's glory. Yeah. He wants you to be glorified together with his son. Amen. It's, isn't that amazing? In yeah. that, he wants you to be glorified with his son in that victory over sin and death that he accomplished on your behalf at Calvary. Amen. How can you not read that verse? Amen. And marvel at God's unending love and grace for all of us. Is that not amazing? Amen. Um, I, that, that is just true. That's truly phenomenal. It is. Um, uh, so, Damon, thank you for that, uh, yeah. my dear brother. That's a by the way, that, yeah. that is a phenomenal verse. All right, let me see here. We've got a number of other comments here. Um, keep them going, brother. I'll be right back. I'm going to take a, all right. a gas break. Uh, first one is now lost and not able to recover, so I sign up the new one. Uh, God is faithful to save, just to save. Lori says, there was a, a hacking browser became emotional anger at me for using sword searching. Hacker browser, remove it to trash in front of me, and I take it out back to desktop. Okay. Uh, Hal, uh, Pastor Hal Beckemeyer, the Dean of Theology for the Beckemeyer Grace School of Hard Knocks, quotes 2 Corinthians 4.13, We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. We having the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. That is awesome. What an awesome verse. What an awesome point to make. Uh, I love that, Pastor Hal. Uh, even when he's not here, he's uh, brilliantly contributing brilliant comments. I love that. Thank you very much. Yeah, we having the same spirit of faith. Uh, Lori says, now I'm using a Lion browser. Uh, seems working again. I am so sorry to hear about that. Um, uh, I thought ROI was doing an African mission commercial. <laughs> wow, wasn't doing a very good one, was he? Um, yeah, uh, Justin Cox said, "Well, and, and how? What good? And what's the point of doing anything if everybody's going to heaven? What's the point? What was the point of God writing the word if everybody's going to heaven? What was the point of you know?" Of, of, of us having a church or ministry, studying the word, doing anything if we're all going to go to heaven anyway, no matter what we do. And what, you know, you can just say, well, all right, uh, you know, it's all about getting rewards. What's the point? Even Rodney took away from us the, the judgment seat of Christ. It's insanity. Um, don't get me started. <laughs> Everybody's laughing about Rob. Uh, Justin says, uh, so weird. About two years ago, I had, uh, sorry, let me actually uh, save that verse. I'm going to quote that when Mike comes back. That was just awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, sorry, so Justin Cox says, uh, so weird, about two years ago, I had uh, started turning to ROI. I enjoyed his old Revelation uh, series, but I began to hear some uh, strange things and began to stop listening, then uh, later heard all his issues. 
Yeah, we got a long history with them. I mean, uh, it wasn't too terribly long after we started the podcast that we had the all the hullabaloo about the uh, all this new stuff Rodney was teaching, which wasn't new at all. Uh, we um, and it just and it just sort of got worse and worse until we finally had to say. Um, yeah, we, we, he really should be marked and avoided. But we do honestly pray. And it's my honest prayer. I, I legitimately love Rodney, and I actually mean that. I love him dearly, and I do hope he will come back to the knowledge of the truth. And I hope he will, at some point, just learn to start treating brethren with speaking truth and love, and speech all the way with grace, season with salt, gentleness, meekness, all that stuff. I pray he you know, becomes a true grace pastor again. Um, but for now, right now, it's, you know, it's, uh, there's just no way. He's, he needs to be marked and avoided. Um, and I'm sorry to say that. No, no, we don't ever want to have to say that about somebody, but it's, that's the reality of it. Um, ROI was raised, RCC. Yes, he was. Justin says, I sure hope he doesn't go back to Rome. I think he wants to start his own denomination. Oh, demon nation. <laughs> uh, Justin says the Pope would say, you must go through me and my church, right? Um, yep, yeah, Mike, I would love to give the Pope the true gospel that saves, Dan says. Uh, Mike says, amen. Uh, Amy Stewart says, get the gospel of the grace of God out there, folks. Uh, today is the day of salvation. That's right. Amen. I completely agree. Uh, you also had. Uh, no, I would, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, I heard about Rodney. There was something else, <laughs> brother, that I failed to say, and and I wanted to clarify this because a lot of times when I give the gospel, I'll I'll say you know there's two things in life we never ask for. Number one, we never ask to be born, and well, number two, we never ask to be imperfect. What Rodney has done is when he's taken that uh, we didn't ask to be imperfect. What he's saying is if God gave us a sin nature and allowed us to have that sin nature, what in essence he's saying is every time we sin, it's not because we did it, it's because God did it. He gave us that sin nature. So every time you sin, you're going to either curse God and say, God, I never would have sinned if you hadn't given me that sin nature. And my comeback to that, when I hear that kind of doctrine being taught, it, that's an abomination to God. And, you know, I say that, yes, we did get a sin nature. We inherited that sin nature. It's genetically resident in each and every one of us. But the thing is, when we got to the age of accountability and we understood what sin was and we knew the difference between right and wrong, God gave us one other thing that we didn't ask for. He gave us a free will. And we can choose to sin or not to sin. So now you're going to, how can you blame God when you've been given the choice to whether to sin or not and you're going to say, God made me do that? That is just very heretical. Yeah. Um, and that's an abomination. And I had to throw that in because yep. i got to be very careful when I, when I give the gospel and I say that to people. It's like you, you really are, you, you've got the double death when you're born. You're born with a sin nature. And then when you know the difference between sin and, and not to sin, you choose to sin. Right. So, yes, you need a Savior. Uh, Amy Stewart. Sorry, brother. That's great. Love it, brother. Uh, Amy Stewart says, get the gospel of the grace of God out there, folks. Today is the day of salvation. I got to tell you, Mike, uh, earlier when you were out, uh, how I came across a verse Hal shared about the faith of Christ. Oh, good. Second Corinthians 4.13, we having the same spirit of faith, Amen. according as it and is There written. you go. I believe. I love it. Thanks, Brother Hal. Uh, <laughs> he, he hops in when we need him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's Just, great. Yeah. Justin Cox says, uh, Galatians 3.10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. That's right. Um, yes, yeah, right. Uh, Dan says, uh, yep, Amy, a 1.5 billion RCC need to hear the true gospel. Amen. Um, 
Uh, totally. Do you know what the fastest growing denomination is in Christianity? I read this this morning. I don't know if I still have the link I don't to know it. That. The fastest growing uh, denomination. It's slower. It's faster than atheism, but slower than Islam. And it's uh, Pentecostals. Wow. Pentecostals. There was um, uh. I saw an article about that this morning. Where Where is it? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Evangelical Focus. That's what it was. I like that website. Um, European. Uh, evangel evangelism uh, kind of focus. It uh, was interesting. There was also um, Jordan Peter. There were a bunch of articles about Jordan Peterson being on Joe Rogan and talking about the Bible. And um, you know the stuff he says about the Bible. It's nice, you know. But you can tell, as brilliant as he is about all this other stuff. He's a babe when it comes to Christianity, and I don't think he's saved yet. I, and I would give my right arm to teach, give him not only the gospel, but also I'd teach him identification. Amen. Uh, the same is true with his uh, daughter. His daughter, I think, came into the faith. There seemed to be, have been articles that indicated that, but uh, even with her, identification. That's, I, that's what I would, I would give anything for them to, for yeah. them to uh, come to understand. Amen, because I think brother. identification, man, should make that psychologist's brain the yeah. switches going off in his brain going that makes Absolutely. sense um, uh, there were um, I had a whole bunch of stuff here too um, there's a um, <laughs> Andy Stanley I'll just point this out Andy Stanley whom uh, Charles Stanley's Charles. son had a sermon um, uh, uh, it was last Sunday or Sunday before last where uh, it opened with a Led Zeppelin concert <laughs> and I, I, I'm like, what? Wow. And, and uh, he uh, stairway it, to heaven, huh? All this, the whole <laughs> yeah. thing. And yeah. the, he says the reason, the reason we, I mean, Led Zeppelin. The the one dude was a was a a, a, a disciple of Aleister Crawley. I mean, you're talking about the legitimate Satanism there. Hmm. And uh, so they did this whole concert of Led Zeppelin at his church, and he said, yes. It was the call to worship. So why did we do that? Here's why we did that. Because we have to let the band get things out of their system every once in a while, just so they'll play the songs we need them to play. Wow. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard yeah. in my life. That's literally, yes. I mean, that's huh. just, that is just mm. insanity. Wow. Yeah, you know what we did? We played, we sang, we sang hymns. And we played a praise song last Sunday. We did yep. that the Sunday before last. Yeah, you wouldn't catch me dead letting oh. us have a Led Zeppelin concert in this oh church. My God. That was just, that's just insanity. What's wrong with these people? Um, that work <laughs> would burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. I can, oh, I can tell man. you right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh. everything Andy does. Is rebellion against his father. That's, it, I mean, I hate to strip it down to the simplistic, but that's oh. that's at the core of everything he does. Uh, um, it, it becomes a numbers game, and they're trying to get people, just like Rodney, we were talking about. And uh, you get as many people as you can to feed in and 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 and, and like your doctrine, and and next thing you know, uh, you got more money coming into the coffers. Uh, you know, and you can say to the audience, "We have so many people that listen to us; they can't all be wrong." Right? You know, and right. you get all this other stuff. Right? Comes numbers game and a money game. Uh, we got Jones in the house. As far as the Pope goes, the very best I could muster is Mark and Avoid. Period. No. Uh, the Pope is very much. Um, he, he's been in the news advocating. Uh, he was uh, promoting, uh, what is it, a Excellent. nun or something that was very much an advocate within the church of the alt lifestyles. Uh, and then he has uh, just recently uh, ta told parents to accept their children who are embracing these alt lifestyles. Um, he has gone, he is, go he is carefully and slowly going woke. Um, and he's already woke. He's just trying to break in the rest of the church. Uh, Justin said, uh, so heartbreaking that the enemy has sown so many religious lies, damning them to hell. Amy Stewart says, sharing with my RCC neighbor, Dan. Uh, Bob Picard says, uh, one of the first things the universalist heretic did was to not allow comments on its YouTube videos. Oh, he right. not only that, the, yeah. you, you say something he doesn't like, he will, just, uh, he, was, he will frequently ban people. 
in the live chat and in the comments. Well, the one thing I didn't understand when I first started listening to that video that we've been kind of talking about with universalism is that he started mentioning our brothers and sisters in Christ, a lot of them. He was mentioning Richard Jordan and Ted Fellows and a lot of people that we have wonderful fellowship with and that agree totally the same way we, we do. And the thing that he said was, I have nothing but praise for and admiration for them, and I think highly of them. And, and all of a sudden, it was all the people that are underneath them are the riffraff, making you and I the riffraff. But he didn't want to throw darts directly at Ted Fellows and Richard Jordan, because I can imagine the response that he would have gotten back from Richard Jordan had he listened to it and he would have just said wait a minute include me ricky would have said include me in the riffraff now i think you know? i think a lot of the people in grace are thinking the same way i was thinking uh which was ignore them yeah because because sure. the because the man wants attention that's why he's out there teaching heresy because he wants to get attention and i don't david re or sorry david osteen had said in his video that you know, he talked about those same verses we talked about the day before, which uh, was the whole forever and ever and Revelation eleven fifteen, and then and then the thousand year reign and, and Revelation twenty six. And he and he said, you know, forever and ever, aeon and aeon. He said, if you he says if he's he's if you don't think that the Bible means what it actually says, you're not a King James Bible believer. And I think I think uh, Osteen is right in that respect because if you're going to sit there and say that that verse doesn't mean what it very plainly says, you don't believe your King James Bible, mm -hmm. as which Rodney always, I'm sorry, this person will always says he does, and if you disagree with him, you're not a King James Bible believer. And see, I think at the heart of it, it's not really about universalism. It's not really about anything. It's about attention. Yeah. I want attention. I want to be. I want you to beat me up and uh, make me the victim. And um, all this stuff. Uh, for why, I do not know. I cannot fathom why. Uh, but that's not what he needs. What he needs is to come to the knowledge of the truth, to appreciate the peace, the fellowship, the love that would exist between us if he was not teaching heresy. But, I mean, this is hey. you, you've reached the, the point of excommunication now. The, mm. Just like Hymenaeus and Alexander. Yeah. They got to, you got, they've got to be cut off from the, from, the, from the saints until they learn to not blaspheme. What, I, what, I, you don't get much more blasphem, blasphemous than universalism. Yeah. Um, well, the other you thing, know, you know, you just I'm trying to use spiritual common sense, but, you know, um, you think about when, when the fallen angels, to stop that rebellion, what did G, uh, God do? You know, right. he, he, well, he, he go, went ahead and created hell. Right. So what he's saying, I guess Rodney may believe that, that there is a hell, but just nobody else is going to go there right. except for the right. fallen angels. Right. And I think that's crazy. Right. And I think I think and to go back to the bigger point that that, you know, you may not hear Ted or Richard or people talk about this because, yeah. you know, like like me, I think, you know, don't give him the attention. That's the whole reason he's doing what he's doing. And I think and so we were kind of holding on to that policy for a long time but th this particular case i just could tell everybody's texting and talking about it and stuff and well, i'm just like well i might as well just might as well just do it well the only reason i brought it up is there 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 may be babes in christ that just got saved right and and they did you know maybe maybe they didn't hear it from rodney but they heard it from another church or right. from you know somebody and now they just happen to get plugged into him right those are the ones you want to recover out of the snare of the you-know-what. Um, that's the ones that you're hoping that maybe you can reach. to, And, and maybe, you know, if they're, if they're safe people that, you know, uh, start listening to him, right. they may, you know, if they got the Holy Spirit living in them, hopefully that spiritual antenna will go up in these people and say, wait a minute, I don't know exactly what's wrong with this guy, but I do know there's something wrong. Right. And I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Right. Or I'm going to go out and listen to maybe some other people, right. you know, right. and see what totally. they have to say. Uh, Bob Picard says the ears have become stopped. That's right. Uh, weakness uh, makes so much sense, Church says. The, it's, it's definitely the emotions for me. I have... 
been over caring about my physical pain for a long time, right? Yeah. Just praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, and, um, but we will absolutely pray for you. Amen. Uh, and your son. I know you want, I noticed earlier you wanted prayer for your son. We will absolutely keep them in mind. And Larry uh, Hines will keep, will keep you and your family in prayers. Um, and, uh, and everybody else, all the saints. Amen. Uh, church says uh, that may be the first time a tetanus shot has been used as an analogy for the Bible, Dan, LOL. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can, yep. That's 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 the that's the benefit of having Dan with us. You you, you hear things you never thought you'd hear before. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, Amy Stewart says, "Who got Joel started?" The whole point of this podcast was to get Mike started. Yeah. Um, uh, Joel did it. Dan says, uh, "Church says me sorry." Joel. Uh, Dan says, "Joel did it. Uh, we got him saved. Uh, we are safe and secure in Christ." Dan says. Uh, Karen says, because of his faith to go to the cross. Uh, I, uh, amen. I love that. Things that differ by uh, Cornelius Stam Church asks, yes. Um, that is the book that lit my fire. My grandfather uh, gave me that book when I was a um, teen, young teen, and um, lit my fire. It is still a favorite of many. Uh, there is just something about the fiery way in which Stam... Uh, um, writes that book that it's just I don't know man it's just it's magic it's really good he is um, it's like um, um, uh, I you know I it was at one point the book that was being used as a course I think when Stan was at Milwaukee Bible Institute with Baker um, and um, you know and now it's just it's it's it was once a course now it's basically everybody's introduction to right division you know that tells you how far we've come um and uh, it's awesome uh, the way he he breaks down the distinctions between the kingdom and the body of christ i love uh there's a lot of things about that book i love it's not perfect nothing is but um love that book that lit my fire uh um, jordan even jordan when he was with us uh, said that book should never go out of print uh, you can find copies of, uh, get PDFs of it for free. Uh, there was at one point they had m uh, agreed to make the uh, book Things That Differ available online for free on a Dutch website, I think. Wow. It might have been Don Avnon's. There was a number of books that they made available for free on the website. And I told, I told the head of their board, I'm like, were you out of your mind? What's wrong with you? Once you make it free, available for free, even if it's a Dutch website, you open that barn door and you'll never close it again, you know. So now you can you can find uh, things that differ as a as a PDF in a number of locations, um, and, and I have it available on the Searchable Riches Drive, and I don't I don't have any regrets about it at all. They're the ones that made the choice to make those books available for free online. So you know, you chose to to make them free at one point. Um, in any event, things that differ, great, excellent yeah. book. Excellent book. Love that. Uh, Dan says, uh, get them to understand that we are Goliath, not David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone uh, wants to be David. Uh, I want, uh, Amy Stewart says, I want to be the stone. Uh, nobody understands that we are the Gentiles. Uh, Justin Cox, just curious, what are like three plain scriptures that you would show someone for the first time the importance of right division? Oh, that's a great question. That's a good one. We know one. I know. Uh, Second two. My um, two fifteen. My favorite thing. Uh, one of the things I did uh, often as an introduction uh, was uh, to say how many how many different types of baptisms are there in the Bible. Then you go through the list of mm -hmm. baptisms, and then I would say, well, what did Paul mean when he said in Ephesians four five, "There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism." does not one mean one how can this not be the baptism of the spirit that takes place the moment you believe first corinthians 12 13 it, I, you know that's that's that was always a favorite argument of mine um i remember hal's father when he was here uh did a test 20 30 years ago uh he got up behind the pulpit and did a testimony i to this day i still remember lee saying yeah, that verse really got me. One means one. I had to admit to myself that one means one. <laughs> um, 
And I think the best approach for a lot of people is how do you explain these distinctions? I would also, if not the water baptism, I would do the I would do the forgiveness uh, d- distinction. You know, when the Lord told mm. the disciples, "If you forgive Matthew. not your brothers, neither will yeah. your for- Father forgive you." In Matthew six, yeah. and then take them to Colossians two thirteen. Amen. Forgiven all trespasses. Amen. Um, I love I love those approaches, but I'd love to know what what you guys think. Church says. Well, the, I'm going to tell you what I think, brother. Do you mind? No, no, please, no. man, come well, on, bring it. I get preach lot, it. I get a lot of people that will, you know, they'll they'll want to label you, and they'll say, "Oh, you're one of those dispensationalists, or you're a hyper dispensationalist." Right. I say, listen, I'm going to tell you who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a Bible believer. I believe in Genesis all the way to Revelation. Yeah. But I read those verses in, in, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, but I read one in 2 Timothy that says, to study, to show myself approved unto God. And I, it tells me, God tells me in that verse to rightly divide the word of truth. So if God tells me to rightly divide, and you want to tell tell, label me a, right, a, a rightly divider, or a dispensationalist, then that's fine, you know, <laughs> because it, I'm just doing what God tells me to do. That's all. I just rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, church says, I love that, brother. Uh, the church says the weight he reported for the soul was 21 grams. He was very precise and accounted for body fluids, lost, etc. Seven times three equals 21. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Dan said, we used to be on the wrong side of the wall, but now we are on the right side of the wall, and the wall is broken down. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. I love it. The way you said that. Amen. (laughs) Karen says, oh my, Dan, are you saying that we're not spiritual Israel? Wow. Oh, gosh. Uh... Uh, Joan says, Joel, in your opinion, did Jesus know the mystery while he was teaching Israel? No. I don't think he did. I think he knew about it after he went back to be, be with the Father. You remember how uh, after the resurrection, he talked to Mary. He's like, don't touch me. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got to go back up to heaven uh, to go be with the Father. And uh, I think that's, it's, by the time you get yeah. to uh, Acts chapter 1 and the disciples ask the Lord, wilt thou you know, mm-hmm. restore the restore kingdom? The and he kingdom. told him, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. Mm-hmm. By the time he says that, I think he knew the, the interruption of if mm-hmm. grace was coming. Yeah. But then again, I you know it's yeah. possible he he may have always known. I'm not I'm not dogmatic about it, and I'm very open to anybody who would want to, who would maybe argue that he always knew and he just never revealed it. I don't know, uh, but my gut tells me he didn't know until he went home to be with the Father, and he came back down to this earth, taught the disciples some, know, knowing what's going to how everything's going to play out, and then he ascends up to heaven, and um, and they're like, yeah. Are we going to get the kingdom now? Dude, can, can, can we have the kingdom now? We're really looking forward to the kingdom. We've been through a lot. We're ready for that kingdom. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons. Mm. Um, the, uh, but, uh, you know, people may di- differ. Uh, church says that is, this is probably dumb, but my, maybe God the Father knew the future, but Christ doesn't. He knows the will of the Father and operates accordingly. I, you know, I, he, the Father absolutely knows the future. Uh, there is, I think it is possible. Christ can know the future if he wants to know. Um, and I think it's very possible that on a few occasions, yeah, I mean, how do you choose to not know something when you're God? But apparently Christ was capable of doing it because he didn't know his own second coming. Um, that's just, I don't know. It's that you're, you're, it's, it's a realm where it's just beyond, mm-hmm. beyond comprehension. I, you know, you, you're, it's, you're reaching that, the, 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 the area of the incomprehensible. Well, that's like asking I, the question, you know, where, uh, when Jesus talks about, you know, if, if Jesus could raise himself up from the dead, why did he need God the Father and the Holy Spirit to raise him up from the right, dead? Right, right. Because it was the, it was the, uh, the Godhead right. that raised him up. Right. So, you know, you the, know the, answer that one. I mean, why, did he, why would he need him, right? Right. If he could raise himself up. Right. Church says, I, and, and it's not a dumb question. You're just. Yeah. It's you're, one you're, you won't know. Y- yeah, you yeah, can't you just know. know the answer you know, you to just. It. Um, so no, it's not a dumb question at all, and no. I uh, I don't blame you for asking. Uh, Karen says, in case it wasn't clear, I don't uh, share Justin's position about Christ's faith or lack thereof. Per Justin, uh, uh, resting is how Justin explains away faith of Christ. No, I never I never took you know 
Um, and I, 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 I got to applaud you for bringing up uh, an interesting take on that. And I'm not sure I had heard that before. And it makes for an interesting thing to discuss. So, I, you know, I don't, you know, I think I thought that was a really great comment. And I really appreciate you doing it. Um, uh, Dan says, as man, he was a prophet. He uh, relied on what God told him. Church says, and maybe sometimes uh, that uh, looks like knowing the future, since he is also God and knows his exact will. He can see most things that are coming. God, and I, and I, you can't explain that either. But he absolutely knows that he knows the future. I mean, the, the, you, you, did you hear last night the predictions of psalm 22 of the most yeah. minute details that would be played out at the cross of calvary who how can you how does god know the future well he clearly does because he could prophesy the smallest details of things that would that would take place at calvary and it all came true exactly as he prophesied it amen that's just mind-blowing mm. That's God, and that's God. <laughs> but God can know the future. He, he can do it you know, all. He know yeah. he can know the future, and you know, even Paul saying, "Whom he did foreknow, he knew you yeah. before you were ever created." Amen. Which is amazing. He's the potter, we're the clay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who are we to question? I mean, yeah, we can ask God questions, but we're not going to ever question what He actually does or doesn't do. You know. Justin says, I need to remember all those verses that easily show the two ministries easy to those who do not know yet. I have them, um, uh, I have the, um, on the, on the, in the prayer chapter on the Empowered by His Grace, in, in my Empowered by His Grace book, the prayer chapter has a long list of contradictions between the two ministries. Um, you know, uh, and uh, that's something I would refer to um, often uh, if that, um, uh, as a as a means of you know opening up a discussion about that with another believer, uh, the uh, Brian Bible Society also has a tract uh, that I loved, uh, a Bible contrast, and they had that has the photo on there, apples and oranges, and in that uh, booklet they go through also a long list of contradictions between the kingdom and the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, that may be of help. Of course, the chart's always great. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you get yourself, um, you know, a fold-out yeah. chart uh, from Forgotten Truths. Those things uh, work wonders. Those are excellent mm-hmm. reads. Um, uh, Karen says, "I love you too, Joel, and learn from you, despite your position on Romans seven nine. Yeah, you know, you'll come around eventually." <laughs> uh, Bob Picard says, uh, "Luke two forty, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him." Yeah, and how do you explain that? Uh, and I don't know. I don't think the pastors would agree with me on this a hundred percent. But I, I think it was. I mean, he was such an infant. I think his humanity had to catch up to his divinity. With the with the development and uh, of his brain and the, and his growth before he could finally come into a full realization of of all that he was, I don't know how else to explain those passages. But he was even as a young age full of wisdom and truth. Um, uh, Paul, Dan says Paul was a murderer. Dan he cites uh, Romans seven nine. I ain't getting into that again. <laughs> I'm not getting into that verse that again. I'm not, getting, why. It, I'm not yeah. getting into it today. Yeah, there you we'll, go. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get into it another time. That's a loaded loaded yeah, verse I, for I, us. I, I want to be here. I, I don't want to debate that. I, I don't want to be sitting here. I want Pastor Hal and Freddie Bear to be sitting here oh, man. when you answer that question. And, I want, and well, answer it, it, no, yeah. well, then, I want, da- then I want David Reed sitting here with me, too, <laughs> and it'll be equal two on two. Oh, we'll there see how you it go. goes. Oh, okay. Fair fight. <laughs> but uh, Dan says, uh, remember as a child when I found out that there were things that I cannot do. Uh, it just jumped on me. Let me get through. Mm. Um, uh, Karen says, oh, Dan, you're just epic. Totally. He is He is the epic big bearded brother in Christ. Uh, Gerard is, hey, we got two Yita hey, here. It's Chayita. good to see you. Yeah, Gerard is in the, the house yeah. also. Love you, Gerard. dear brother. Yeah. Uh, hey, we got Josh Trelecki. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. My dear, oh, you beautiful yeah. man. I have on yeah. my list uh, to talk today about deadly regrets. Uh, if I don't, uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, guys, go to supplyofgrace.com. Go read Josh Trelecki's new article on deadly regrets. It's totally awesome. And, uh, 
I'm going to hopefully, uh, I'll just make that my hope opening monologue tomorrow. Um, so uh, thank you for writing all this stuff. I don't have to write out myself. Uh, it was a beautiful, that was a phenomenal article, legitimately. And I, you're just, um, I love you dearly, man. I really do. And what's it going to take for you to bring your family down here to Florida? I, I, you know, I'm stuck here. You got to come here to me, brother. Yeah. You got to bring your kids and your family down here. We'll entertain you. Come on, man. Come on. And you need to and you come down here and hang with us. Hang with us on the podcast. I would give my right arm to have you here with us, uh, honestly. Yeah, he's one brother that edifies the body of Christ, and he does it with love. Yeah, today and I'm, truth, and I, I and I rejoice in that. Um, until you mentioned his name, I, I really didn't know, and I I had opportunity to go in and look at a couple of his, of his videos. Yeah, and I'm going, man, where was this pastor like 20 years ago or oh, 30 yeah. years ago? If we'd have had more not just grace pastors, but grace pastors that actually lived the grace life and delivered the, the message in truth and love, there really would be more of a grace movement. There would be more grace and there would be more movement. So I rejoice that we're starting to see, and I guess, you know, be, because of having the podcast, and I know, you know Brother Joel, you have have really reached out to other pastors of like faith. Oh yeah, they're that awesome. that are just so wonderful. Well, uh, not, and not getting all of them, them. <laughs> getting getting them involved in the ministry because yeah. after all, it's not just fellowship. You know, Church of, of Orlando. You know, yeah. we have Grace Churches. I, I love what Kevin Kevin Hobbs said. Someone asked Kevin Hobbs. He said. Well, how many people go to your church? And he said, well, I, I'm sure there's over a million. And, and, and the person looked at him like, over a million in Tampa? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, we right. Got, that was awesome. There yeah. are millions of grace believers yeah. that need to hear yeah. what we're talking about, yeah. you know? And Josh is just one of those ones you just enjoy listening to. Yeah. You know? I, I'm and a, so I rejoice in that. I, I, I love you dearly. I love you too much, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, what else we got here? Let me. Uh, I'm going to skim the rest of these comments, and, and then we'll close if, it down. If Stephanie's listening, I want to say a special shout out <laughs> to you, Stephanie. And I am so sorry that I used a four letter cur curse word uh, <laughs> when I listened to that video. So uh, I, I wanted to, because that's just not who I am. Yeah. I, usually, I don't. I, I just really don't get too upset. Oh, uh, but I got. You know, it says if we get angry without a cause. And I got angry with a cause, uh, the, so uh, I think I'm okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So she'll know what I'm talking about. Church <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, says, if we're all going to heaven, what is the point of earth and its suffering? Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because it is, it, it determines reward. Yeah. You're talking about eternity. And this is the point of the, of the uh, and we'll start with the kingdom. The point of the suffering, you know, you have at the re end of Revelation 2, the point of the suffering of going through the tribulation and all that stuff, it will determine your placement in the kingdom. It will determine your reward in the kingdom, your, your position of authority in the kingdom. And I believe that it is a similar but different principle for the body of Christ. We know we get rewarded at the judgment seat, and then we also have seats in heavenly places in Christ. And I Amen. think... The location of your seats will also be determined by the quality of your service to the Lord. And it may be possible that the, the reward of the judgment seat and the position of your, of, of your heavenly seat, that may be one and the same, I don't know. But I do believe it's all about eternal reward. Yeah. It's all about eternal positions. I mean, if everybody did everything perfectly, then how would you determine who goes where and who mm -hmm. does what? You know, this uh, will determine who goes where, who does what for all eternity in his kingdom. There is only one kingdom. It just so happens that our role in the kingdom would be in the heavenly seats and the Israel's role in this kingdom, heavenly kingdom on earth, will be on the earth. That's the only distinction. Um, and uh, I, 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 so, you know, the point of everything, reward, position, Eternal, it is everything has eternal consequences. Everything has eternal consequences. Amen. So, you know, it's it's worth it. And in fact, the worse trouble you go through, probably the greater the reward <laughs> you're going to get. <laughs> and it's going to be amazing. Uh, and, and you think about, you know, the limited sufferings of this present time. 
what a blink this is when you when you think about eternity is a line that goes on forever what a blink in time all of this is you're going to be can you imagine life a million years from now you're like oh yeah i barely re- i think i suffered for a couple of years on earth you know uh that was about it um it's nothing compared to eternity nothing compared to eternity at all um so uh church says that god didn't give us a sin nature adam and eve did well and even if we did not have a sin nature we would still sin, just as Adam and Eve did. That's the point. It doesn't matter. Uh, God, uh, this uh, universalist would blame God for us having a sin nature. God's like telling you, it doesn't. It doesn't. We're all in Adam. We're all the same. We all would have done the same. We're all. We are all guilty of free will choice of of sinning it doesn't matter i suppose you could go through and have everybody have have be be born innocent until they choose to sin and then they and then they all need redemption but it doesn't matter we are all in all in adam we are all guilty of that same free will choice of sin so it's not god's fault amen and uh, and it is on all of us to worship our creator and to accept that redemption that 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 work of that atoning work of us that substitutionary atoning work of the lord jesus christ in order to to get redemption um well yeah. we'll, we'll get to that in just a second let me get through oh, the comments here and then i'm gonna have you do no, the gospel go brother. Ahead, brother and then we'll uh yeah. and then we'll call it a day um and don't get me started <laughs> dan says if god takes away our choice then we do not have free will exactly yeah. and essentially at the very core of universalism is a calvinist ideas um which which Hal was talking about on monday i think i think so you know there is not that much of a difference in terms of universalist and calvinist in their thinking uh, god forcing everything to happen uh, and i thought that that was really uh, brilliant. Uh, Church says, I thank God for my free will and his grace that gave me the time to choose to accept his free Amen. gift. And in fact, that sounds like a good transition to get into the gospel. Yeah. Uh, Dan says, God also allowed light into the world. God is light. So light was not created. God said, let there be light in the world. Church said, to try to reach out to Jordan Peterson, his lecture videos helped me a lot. I think if the truth was shown to him, not only would he see it and believe it, but we would get a greater a great grace pastor and i think i mean he is sort of drawn to it but you're looking at you look at what he said on joe rogan he's still dancing around the issue he's not willing to really come to accept by faith the truth of the gospel in scripture and he's just he's just sort of dancing around the issue i don't think he's saved yet i I, he may be but i my gut tells me no i think his daughter probably is i would give anything to give that man the gospel uh bobby carr says we play real rock music in our church the solid rock rock of ages uh church says he has so many messages about personal responsibility and being open and vulnerable and how that strengthens us i totally agree Uh, and i've heard many of his videos myself um uh karen says roi's views have dropped about 80 percent uh yeah and you compare the number of percentages of you think of it in terms of percentages because there's always a low you have a subscriber a number a subscriber base but the people that the number of people that actually view the videos you know they're not going to watch all of them and stuff so there's always a low percentage compared to the number of subscribers you have uh i don't think any you know so that but that 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 gulf of the subscribers and the percentage of people watching is greater in Ro- on Rodney's channel than any other Grace channel. So what, he does get a thousand views, but he's got what thirteen, fourteen thousand uh, sub- subscribers. I mean, at least with us and, and with Brian and everybody else, you have a greater percentage of your subscribers actually watching your videos. And yep. you had Rodney, and you had him saying to Brian on Facebook. You know, you only get 200 views and stuff. That is just a slap in the Mm. face from God to you. Oh, my God. The nastiest Mm. comment ever, which is, you know, I I wanted to respond, but I kept my mouth shut. And I would have been like, yeah, well, a lot of people love heretics. Look at Joel Osteen's channel. Wow. You know, but 
to say that is mm. pure narcissism. It, what is nasty approach to to take with a grace pastor of all things? Yeah. Uh, don't get me started on that. Uh, I got banned for saying quiet, everyone. Mass is starting. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Gerard says, as soon as you have uh, one foolish thought, you have already sinned when you're accountable mm. because you know the difference between good and evil. Proverbs 29, 24, 9, the the uh, the thought of foolishness is sin. Um, uh, what do we got here? Anything else? Um, uh, what do we got here? Bob Picard says one of the biggest hurdles we face is tradition bias. People just will not look at the literal, in-context meanings of Scripture, verses, chapters, or entire swaths. I love that comment, brother. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, wholeheartedly. Wow. Wow. Uh, uh, all right, let me just. Um, you know, hey, hey, brother, how do you how do you get the free gift of eternal life? I just want to say just one thing, and say then anything I'll, you like. I'll let you know. But it's all, you know, I I like to, uh, you know, when you think about the response about boy, this grace stuff. If that that stuff is really true and it's so great, how come there's so few members? And I used to, I'd, I'd always think about the little flock, and I would say the the number of the little flock that believe the message of the kingdom back when they they were such a small percentage of p people right you know and i got to believe when we compare grace believers that have been saved by the grace of god and have trusted in christ for their savior right. i would say percentage wise we are a very very small percentage and so uh, i rejoice in that now that you ask me how you get eternal life we would like to up the percentages a little bit <laughs> on, on seeing some people get saved yeah and i just loved when you asked pastor how how do you get saved brother and he goes well don't go you don't you can't walmart. buy it at walmart you can't buy it at target you can't and i wanted to say well what if it's a blue light special but uh no i wouldn't even say that but uh i thought his response was wonderful and what a blessing but you know on a sad note you think about it, and we haven't talked about the vaccines, virus, and all that stuff, but right now the death toll, and we don't know the numbers that are actually because of the virus, but they're, they're saying in upwards of 870,000, almost 900,000 people. And if, if that's true, and even if it's half of that that was caused by the virus, whatever, whatever the people died of, if that number is 900,000 or a million, you got to ask yourself, and I know we have been entrusted with the gospel of the grace of God, and we have to ask our, ourselves, I wonder how many of those people actually heard the gospel of the grace of God. You know, did, did anybody love them enough to share with them? If they could know where you're going to spend eternity, would you want to know? And, and, and if you want to know, do you, would you like to choose where you're going to spend eternity? And I, I know everybody that God has, has put in each and every one of us, uh, what do you call it? He's put in an in, in, internal... Uh, uh, you talk about the spirit of man, the yeah, God the, consciousness, yeah, our witness? The, the God con consciousness and witness in each and every one of us. And I think if every one of us are honest... Uh, with 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 one another, we would at, we would admit that one day we are going to die. But your next question should be: Well, if there is an afterlife, if there truly is a God, and there truly is a heaven, and there is a earth, where will I spend eternity? That needs to be the question that you would ask yourself. And that internal witness that you have in you, that internal conscious, that God conscious, um, you can know and choose where you're going to spend eternity. And God loved you so much before you were even born that he had a plan of salvation for you. Because it says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God thought about you before you were even born. I know I mentioned two things. I know you never asked to be born. We, none of us asked to be born. And I know you never asked to be imperfect. 
And I know you would be honest and say, no, I'm not perfect. And so that's what the Bible defines uh, as sin. If we've done anything that is, not, is against what God's will is. And so I think in being honest with yourself, you would have to admit that you're a sinner. And I think a fool says in his heart that, wait a minute, I'm not a sinner, so why do I need a Savior? But a wise person would say, you know what? I have sinned. I do need a Savior. Because if the wages of sin is death, then that means eternal separation from God. And I want to say this. I don't like to talk about it that much, but I wouldn't be given the gospel unless I told you that there is a literal, physical, visible hell. And if you choose not to accept that free gift of eternal life, then you're basically telling God that, wait a minute, I don't believe what you say. I don't, you know, uh, an atheist would say, I don't believe there is a God. And so uh, you, God would be just in all his righteousness and holiness if you refuse and reject the free gift of eternal life he would give you what you chose, and that's eternal damnation. And none of us want that. I know Pastor Hal and I, we beg and urge people and tell them about this wonderful, uh, powerful, saving message of the gospel of the grace of God. And if you, in simple childlike faith, will take God at his word that he had planned for you and loved you before you were even born, he, d he has done something for you that you couldn't do for yourself. He sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be, to, uh, and Pastor Hal, I mean, uh, P Pastor uh, Joel talked about this last night. I got all choked up talking about the suffering and the persecution that the son of God went through. And he had you, and, and then he was crucified, and then he died. But he did this with you in mind. He had Joel on his mind. He had me on his mind. He has you on his mind, if you haven't received the gift of eternal life, that he would die for your sins. So if you would simply, in childlike faith, believe what God said he has done for you because of what his son, Jesus Christ, accomplished at Calvary, you have eternal life as a present possession. Receive that gift. Thank God. Thank Jesus. And thank the Holy Spirit for convincing you and converting you. And now, if you've received that, we'll call you a brother or sister in Christ. And you have a bright, bright future with the Lord Jesus Christ. That might actually be my favorite gospel presentation you've ever done. Oh, amen. That brother. was phenomenal, dude. Amen, uh, how about a word of prayer? Heavenly amen. Father, how grateful we are for Brother Mike Moriarty. Amen. Thank you, brother. My ragamuffin brother. <laughs> ragamuffin roommate. I love him dearly, and I uh, totally lift him up and his entire family uh, this weekend. Uh, with all of the health and uh, stuff going on, I just pray Mike has a uh, phenomenal ministry opportunity. Uh, I pray for myself and my own abandonment issues I have because I live with Mike. Oh. Uh, I pray that, uh, you know, I uh, <laughs> find ways to entertain myself this weekend. I'm going to give you my uh, pillow, brother. <laughs> Um, I uh, uh, I totally lift up also uh, Church, Church's son, Larry Hines, uh, his family, all the dear saints in the live chat. Uh, I'm, I won't mention them all, but I lift them all up, every last one of them. Uh, those who have been with this uh, channel and this uh, podcast for years, um, I just I, I, I appreciate their ministry to us. Uh, their uh, time in the Word, their, the, the uh, wonderful comments they contribute to the discussion, and I, I, and I totally pray for all of their, their growth and uh, uh, for um, uh, not just their growth, but also they may abound in love and grace toward everyone around them, including, including the unbelievers, and that we may all take advantage of the opportunities we have, as Amy Stewart said, to get the word out, to show the, uh, to share the gospel with the lost, and that Amen. they may come into a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, 
and they'll be free, and they will go home with all of us, uh, which might just be around the corner. We yeah. can only hope. We love you, Father. We're so grateful for everything you've done for us. We love you and the 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 whole plan of salvation, the amazing uh, age of grace you you designed everything the everything you've done to have a relationship with us. We just we don't have the words to be able to tell you how grateful we are, how much we praise you for all that you've done, and and, um, we can't wait to meet you, Father. Uh, Having said all of that, Father, I just uh, lift up all the saints, all the members of this church, all the many issues and the many circumstances. I pray that, uh, you know, as we had been talking about earlier, we will simply celebrate the sufficiency of the grace. We will rejoice in our infirmities and uh, keep praising you and thanking you every step of the way. We love you, Father. We uh, thank you for everything, and we just... um, pray that uh, uh, everything we say and do will glorify your Son, our Savior, and it's in His name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I just, uh, real quick, the uh, Maria J. Martin uh, came in and left a comment. She said, thank you for another wonderful postcard. <laughs> Praying for you both, dear ones. Oh, yeah, okay, sh- Maria, sweetheart. Love her. This is, this is not a postcard. <laughs> this is what we call a podcast. <laughs> It's a podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. It's a podcast, not a postcard, maybe a she, podcast. Maybe she sent us She's, a postcard. Yeah, you know, I think I think her mind's too far gone to accept the gospel now. Uh, Look, Maria, did you uh, go back about five minutes and listen to Mike share the gospel? Oh, I love you, Maria. Love All right, you guys, too, we'll darling. be back here for Open Chat Friday tomorrow at 10 a.m. Take good care. Amen. Bye-bye, guys. Have a bad day. <laughs>